Hello, everybody. Welcome to Excel Video 329. I've been talking to a big group this week that's changing PM systems and has a whole bunch of contracts. They're trying to figure out how do we organize them and upload, organize them into Excel and then upload them into the new PM system. They came to me for help. If I can help you with a similar project as you're migrating between systems, I'd love to. What we're going to do today is talk about this pivot chart. And you'll notice as I add more fields, let's just throw some stuff in here for fun. If I've got a bunch of fields going on in this pivot chart, it really starts to get busy. And there, there's pros and cons to what I'm going to talk about today. And the place to look for all this information, how to manage it, you'll notice is inside the pivot chart, pivot chart tools and the analyze tab. That's where we're going and that's where we're going to play today. Because the way this works, it's a little bit screwy. In Excel 2003, all of these fields were on a pivot chart. You could filter from here. You could sort. And, you know, oh, I only want to see uh, patients in the District of Columbia and see how that changes. This is a filter and this is just a drop down. And you can turn the filter off. In Excel 2003, you could do all this. And I guess, you know, Microsoft got some complaints and said, hey, you know, the chart's too busy. This is a mess. So in Excel 2007, they turned all this off, and the chart looks like that. It's clean. And then apparently all the people that liked it before complained, and now in Excel 2010, it's back. And by default, all of these fields show up again. It's a personal preference thing. If you like it, I'm going to show you how to keep it. If you don't like it, I'm going to show you how to get rid of it. But before you decide whether or not you like it, let me show you what it does. From here, I mean, we did this last time. You can filter the legend and add more fields here and then over here you can filter the code levels which you know if you wanted to exclude say code levels one and two for the purpose of the chart you could do that and you can do it live from here or from here and you know sometimes that's handy and if you don't do it from here you could certainly come back and do it from the pivot table itself but if, if this is a big pivot chart and you've got it maybe on its own tab or on a dashboard maybe it's handy to have these things here so you can filter it on the other hand, if you're going to display this thing and you've got all these fields in your way, you know, you may say, hey, you know what, Nate, I, I'm never going to filter by only, I, you know, I'm never going to care what my Medicare E&M coding levels are for the purposes of this chart. Get rid of this stuff. But I still want it in my pivot table because I like having these filters up here because I may want to use it in there. I just don't want to clutter up my chart. From the analyze, let me show you what these guys do. The report filter field button is those guys along here. See how everything shifted up? and city location insurance went away. The legend field is the doctor. This guy over here, it's our columns. The axis is that guy down there. It's these it's these rows here and these what the row labels have. It's code level. And the value field button in our case is just count a patient because there's only one value in there. So you can turn them on or off one at a time or you can hide all or uncheck hide all and show them. Again, it's a preference thing. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, here's how to get rid of it. You may want to leave it on there to start with, get the filtering pretty much the way you want it, and then turn it off. Whatever works best for you, but now you know enough to hopefully make a good decision on whether or not to show or hide the pivot chart field buttons. That's what I wanted to show you today. There's more tricks for pivot charts, and we'll start talking about those in the next Excel video. Thanks for watching.